today we're going to talk about why I got sober, which kind of is like, well, you were addicted to alcohol, wouldn't wouldn't you just, would not be your why? It's a lot deeper than that. It genuinely, truly is. And if you guys have not watched my addiction video yet, this will still make sense to you. But if you want to learn more about like why I was addicted and how I used it and the big catalyst event that actually le le led to my perspective change, the legalities, the timeline and all of that, you can check out that video on another episode of Sounds Like a You Problem podcast. It's already posted. But what we do here on Sounds Like a You Problem is really address the victim mentality. I tried to acknowledge everything that I was doing to myself in active alcoholism and reframe that and create new beliefs and new mindsets for myself that don't make me a victim of life, that I don't victimize myself thinking everything happens to me and more so try to look at it in a way that it's happening for me. And it has completely changed my life. I wouldn't have this type of mindset or perspective without sobriety. And I want to talk about like why I got sober from the depth of my heart, like the actual perspective change. So yes, I did get into a car accident and it was a really big catalyst. It led to my perspective shift, but the perspective shift is actually what made me make these changes. And I want to, I want to dive a little bit deeper into it. So don't forget to follow along, subscribe and like if this episode brings you value of any kind, or if you just want to hear more about my, my journey in sobriety. It actually all starts a few years ago, about a year before I got sober. I had the realization that I had a problem with alcohol, but I didn't have resources or solutions or ideas to fix the problem. I was just an alcoholic. I was so dependent physically and mentally, emotionally, and spiritually upon alcohol, and I did not see a light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't see a way out. I didn't, I, I didn't know where to go, where to turn, who to ask for help, and so I decided to pray. And I didn't know who I was praying to, what I was praying to, if it was even considered a prayer. But I was speaking out loud because I have severe ADHD. I thought that if I spoke out loud, I wouldn't get lost in my train of thought. I would able to be able to talk to someone, to something that this, 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 if this existed, if anyone existed, if anything existed, it would hear me and it would hear my thoughts a little bit more complete because I was belligerently drunk at the time if I just spoke out loud so that I could keep my train of thought. So I did that for about an hour and a half, alone, in a house, drunk. And I guarantee if anyone seen me, I would be in an asylum right now. I would be in a mental institution because it was nonsense. It was blabbering. It was crying. It was emotional. It was just asking for hope, trying to receive hope, trying to feel faith, trying to feel anything. Okay. And I'm still doing this again while completely intoxicated. And I spoke to whoever was listening. And I, I just asked for the weight that I felt in my heart, the darkness that was in the corners of my heart, the shadows that I felt that were in so in control of the, of the angry person that I had become that these things I couldn't let go of, this negative nastiness that felt like it was overshadowing any hope, joy, or positive emotions that I could feel to be removed from my heart. And at the same time, I asked for a light at the end of the tunnel. I asked for a way to see my way out. I asked if whoever created me could take everything from me, everything from me, so I could just quit drinking alcohol. And the very next day, I drank more alcohol for about a year longer. Most of the time, I fully ignored my addiction. I knew that it was a problem, but it was very low on my priority list of acknowledging as an actual problem. One of the next life events that happened to me, or rather my sister, was that she got pregnant and my, my nephew was expected to be born in December or January. And so summer of that year of 2020, I moved up closer to my sister and I worked a serving job and I actually ended up moving into her nursery to save up for a place all while still being fully addicted to alcohol. My sister trying to express concern but being a 20 year old pregnant with her first child and navigating the difficulty of her relationship, she didn't have the capacity to help me nor did I have the capacity to care to be helped at the time. As you hear many times, you cannot help an addict unless they want to help themselves. But you can help them to realize that other people see that they have a, you have a problem. And that it makes it a lot harder to deal with when you realize you're not hiding it as well as, as an addict as you thought you were. Anyone expressing concern for me wasn't really a contending factor in my want to get 
sober. My want to get help, as selfish as that is, it is the real, honest, vulnerable truth of mine and of most addicts, honestly. So on April 1st of 2021, it was a crisp, clear spring evening at about 9.17 p.m., and I rolled my Fiat 500 three times and was trapped upside down in it. When the firefighters got me out, I then proceeded to go to the police station, escorted by the police officer to get my fingerprints taken, and then I went to the hospital to have an MRI and an examination, where they found that nothing was wrong with me at all, except for the minor little scratch that I had on my right hand on the knuckle of my pinky. My mom drove me home. I got home, and I wondered how I was going to pay my bills how I was going to afford to pay off the loan of my car that I didn't have insurance coverage on, how I was going to get to work, how I was going to keep up, how I was going to get food for my dogs, how life was going to continue. Because not everything had been taken from me yet, but every resource that I had to keep the things that I did have left was taken from me. The ability to outsource those things and figure that out was taken from me. It wouldn't be until about a year into my sobriety that I realized that everything was taken to me and that was my catalyst for changing and finally getting sober. And not only that, but I realized that I had asked for that two years prior. I was in a position ultimately at that point to lose more than I ever even had, than I, than I had ever even accomplished, and something had to give. I started reflecting on my life and my choices and I realized that words have a really big impact on people positive, negative, just words in general, right? It's our biggest form of communication and is how we can express the things that we feel the best that we can versus just making someone else feel it. The most important words in my life that have stuck with me the longest, be the person you needed when you were younger. That has always been such an impactful sentence to me since I can remember. And I realized that I was not the person I needed when I was younger. I wasn't the person I needed now. I wasn't the person anyone needed. I wasn't proud of myself. I wasn't proud of my actions. I wasn't proud of where I've come from or where I am now. I had absolutely no desire to live at all. And I thought that maybe trying to get sober would possibly give me a reason or a purpose or make things a little bit easier or better, but that If it didn't work out, it didn't matter because I didn't really want to be here anyway. And honestly, the reason I used alcohol for the majority of the time, I didn't know it at the time, but looking back now, was because it was a sneaky, selfish, manipulative way for me to possibly escape this life that I didn't want to live without there really being blame put on me, nor would I have to face the consequences of how I got to the point to end my life if I could just cover it up with alcohol. So when I got sober, when I decided... Before I got sober, when I decided that I was going to try to get sober, I realized that not only am I going to try to get sober, I'm going to try to rewrite the entirety of my being. I'm going to try to rewrite my whole present tense, my whole future tense. I'm going to, I'm going to be and become the person that I needed when I was younger. And if I can't successfully do that, it doesn't matter because I have very low expectations and very little desire to be on this planet anyway. I was really just looking for a way to exit Earth and I thought... Well, before I do that, I might as well give this one last ditch effort to try to want to stay. And that was my genuine perspective. That was my mindset. I didn't have any expectations on sobriety. I just had like a small little sliver of hope that it might help. But if it didn't, I had a backup plan. But also out of spite for myself, I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to do it the best way. I'm going to do it the best it's ever been done. And I'm going to do it very, very thoroughly. I did realize that my drinking was a direct reflection of the answer to this question. A question I had never asked myself, nor did it ever occur to me that I needed to ask myself this question. Did I love myself? And the answer was no. And my drinking was a direct reflection of the fact that I did not. And I thought, well, I'm going to try to love myself the best that I can. I'm going to learn to love myself, and I'm going to do it really well. I'm going to do it better than anyone ever has, which isn't a very high regard to beat. But I'm going to do it the best that I ever can. My reason and my why to get sober was to love myself more. And I fully submerged and dove off the deep end into it. I picked up hobbies. I learned to find my style. I learned how to better have hygienic routines 
which is a direct reflection of loving yourself. If you are not hygienically taking care of yourself, you probably don't care what you look like, smell like, feel like, anything. I started taking that very seriously, my dental health very seriously, my physical health very seriously. The way I carried myself, my demeanor, my attitude, my mindset, my perspective, my hobbies, who I was hanging out with, how my relationships were in my life, whether it was with my mom, my brother, my sister, my nephew, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, my grandma, my grandpa, I don't care, my boyfriend. I looked at those relationships. I asked how deep they were. I asked what type of people those were. I asked if I had boundaries in place. I asked what my morals and my values were. What were my beliefs? If I had beliefs, was I just saying that I had beliefs and putting words there to back it up or were my actions actually backing up my beliefs, morals, and values? Because prior they weren't and it was a lot of work and it was really really hard to do in the beginning because in the beginning you're feeling feelings that you haven't felt for years that you've numb for years and not only are you just feeling normal feelings that people feel on a day-to-day -day basis but you're feeling feelings that you have numbed you have suppressed for years and it is hard it's hard to process it's hard to not have coping skills it's hard to learn those coping skills it's hard to not run back to your old life it's hard to not run back to your old solution and to have to navigate the world and look for new solutions and not only that but solutions that work that stick to create habits and routines that ultimately change your life and I break down a lot of this almost all of it in different episodes of Sounds Like a You Problem podcast but I felt like this episode was needed I felt like this was I, I, I haven't I haven't told this part of my story. I haven't really explained the why as much as I've talked about the why and mentioned the why and how sobriety led me to really take inventory of my life. This is what the inventory looked like. This is what the beginning stages looked like. This is how it felt. It felt rough and hard and confusing and terrifying and so foreign, so unknown. And I cannot describe to you what it feels like to live a life that you don't know how to live unless you've been there. And if you are an addict or you are a recovering addict, I know that you have been there. It is isolating and it is lonely and it is terrifying. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. But addiction is so much harder to go through and to live through and to grow through. You don't, you don't reap any benefits. You don't get to see the fruits of your labor. You don't get to see any prizes or happiness or joy or love or understanding or empathy or compassion when you are an addict. But when you are sober and you learn to navigate these hard things that happen either way, because guess what? Life is life. It is a roller coaster of up and downs, my friend. Life happens either way. It goes up and it goes down and you are stuck on that roller coaster. And the best way I have learned how to manage it is to be sober. Because if you throw alcohol in there or you throw a drug in there, or you throw some kind of substance abuse disorder in there, Okay, the ups and downs, they make you throw up a lot, a lot quicker. They make you dizzy a lot quicker. You can't handle as many as fast as quick. Okay, it puts you on a halt, puts you on a stop, it puts you off the tracks. You got to get back on the tracks because you can only go through life. You can't go around it. You have to go through. This all happened in the first month that I was sober. I will say, like, after going home and realizing that I just genuinely didn't love myself more and then reflecting on that a bit longer and figuring out how I could show myself that I loved myself more, I started going through withdrawals and my mom took me back to the hospital because I thought the withdrawals were just not that bad and also effects of maybe the car accident I had just experienced and we found out that I needed to medically taper safely because alcohol is very dangerous, so please seek medical help. I went to the emergency room. I could not afford going to a detox center, nor could my dogs afford that or my rent or anything. My lifestyle just didn't line up with that. Um, I didn't have any resources or help. My mom had just been released from prison. My sister was a first-time mom to a newborn, and my brother is much younger. Um, my biological dad's side of the family is not around, and my mother is the black sheep, and her mother was never around. So you can see my resources were very limited when it comes to family, and all the friends that I had surrounded myself with were just as bad of addicts as I was, if not worse. So they prescribed me a medical taper and I came back home and I got sober. I got rid of my mouthwash. I got rid of all of my alcohol, my shot glasses, my wine glasses, my wine openers, all of the shot bottles I could find in old purses. And I started to purge my house. I rearranged my living room. I cleaned everything. I rested. I ate. I drank when I felt like I was thirsty. I asked for help on TikTok. I asked for community. I looked up resources. I Googled things. I researched. I journaled. I notebooked. I brain dumped. I did everything that I could because I was like, 
if I just do everything, some of it will stick. I'll figure out what works for me and what doesn't work for me, but I wanna try it all at once so a lot of it sticks. And it did, I created a nighttime routine and it helped me sleep better, it helped me focus better, it helped me create habits and routines and figure out what that looks like for my life and that I could expect the same thing to happen every single evening for me and that helped me set me up for a more successful day and I got a job and I started working and I paid off all my legalities and I successfully completed probation as of January 4th of this year. I paid everything off. I did all the classes, I did all the hard work, I put my fucking head down, and I did the fucking work. And here I am to show up for it. I'm happy, I'm thriving, I hardly ever crave alcohol anymore. I live a life that genuinely does not include alcohol. It does. I do not partake in drinking it, I do not partake in the activities that I only did because alcohol was able to be consumed at those activities, and it was a, less, a lot less likely that someone would call you out for being an alcoholic if you were drinking alcohol in those environments. And I don't do those anymore. I don't partake in those anymore. And I see a lot of the people that I hung out with still struggling. And it makes me sad because I feel like I don't have the ability to reach out to them. I feel like I don't have the ability to say anything or I'm not, I don't want them to think that I am judging them. I just want them to know that I've been where they've been and that I want them to seek help. And I don't know how to approach that. So if you have any suggestions or advice on how to approach that, please let me know. I wanted to learn how to love myself, and that's why I got sober. And boy, do I love myself. Boy, am I proud of the person that I have become. I really think that I am the person that I needed when I was younger now. I was successful, and not everyone is. Be the person you needed when you were younger. It will change your life.